Hello and welcome to another painting video. In this video, I'll be painting a Death Guard kill team. I love the Death Guard and kill team, so anything for an excuse to paint more Plague Marines. I did a Plague Marine video way back, but I think it's time to revisit and see if I improved in any way. For these Plague Marines, I went with the approach of their original bone white armor slowly degrading and changing to green. Let's begin, shall we? First off, I printed these excellent flame elementals from Epic Basing. I'll be painting these as wisps of plague fog rising from the ground. I did a little head swap for the champion as this head looked more gross. And of course the mascot of the group, this sassy little nurgling which I place on a small rock. I airbrushed black primer on the bottles. I make sure to get this primer everywhere so I can have some nice dark shadows. <coughs> Next I airbrush Usapti bone over pretty much the entire model, but I do keep spraying from an angle. This will keep the black in the deepest shadows. With ivory, I lighten the armor a bit to a more bone white. You can also use Screaming Skull for this step. Finally, I spray on Ulthan Grey to the areas I want to be highlighted the most, like the face and other elements that stick out. Now that we have some nice pearly white armor, it's time to dirty it up. I'm applying streaking grime in two steps. First I dilute it with white spirit and use it as a wash on the models. Then I go over the model with streaking grime again, straight out of the pot in the recesses. With a makeup sponge and some white spirit I start removing the streaking grime from the upper parts of the model, bringing back some of the white armor. This creates some easy highlights. For added texture and grossness, I add streaking grime with a sponge. This creates some interesting textures on the armor. Finally, I add Mortarian grime to the model. This is a very subtle, dirty green and works excellent on these Plague Marines. I'll be adding a little bit more green later. Now this looks like some disgusting dirty armor, right? The advantage of this approach is that you can remove as much streak and grime as you want or as little. Just use the white spirit to control the look of your model. I paint any part of the model that I want metal with Iron Warriors. It's darker than Lead Belcher and covers really well. I've tried a lot of different bronze colors, but I really like Hashnut Copper, which I used here. It covers nicely and it has a nice light base, perfect for additional shading. Both metal and bronze are shaded with Agrax Earth Shade. And highlighted with Kaneptek Alloy. It's a very interesting color. It lies somewhere between metal and bronze, and I can really recommend this color. Boy, these smelly boys have a lot of detail on them. I'll tackle all the big stuff first, and slowly work my way up to the little details. Next is weapons. The gun casings I paint with Incubi Darkness. Slightly dark green tint. I'm not going standard Death Guard green, but I like to keep it in the green range a little bit. The Plague Swords get a coat of Caliban green. I'm actually painting them the same way as I did for my Plague Bearers. I wash both the gun casing and the swords with Gnome Oil. The swords are highlighted with Ogren Camo. I went two passes with highlights here. The gun casings get a highlight of Verizian Grey. These colors work very nicely with each other. 
They also connect the Plague Marines to my Plague Bearers and my Putrid Blight Kings from AOS because I painted their armor a little bit like the gun casings. Yeah, it's a little bit specific, but at least it will look nice in my glass cabinet. Time to get down with Dirty. I use Dirty Down Rust. I did actually heat out the pot before use with a hand dryer. It says so on the label. I'm not sure if it works better than when you don't. I honestly couldn't really see the difference with this stuff, but it looks so good on Plague Marines. The best part is it reactivates and evaporates with water. Use a clean wet brush to either remove the rust where you don't want it or blend hard streaks where applicable. Next I'm using another Dirty Down product called Dirty Down Moss. It goes on very light but it dries up a little bit darker. I thought it looked cool to add some splashes of toxic green on the armor. It's like their armor is slowly eroding to this green. A process spanning millennia. Finally I'm using Nihilac Oxide on the bronze parts of the armor to add some verdigris effect. Now this is starting to look like a nasty plague marine. With these effect paints you can control how much or how little you want to use. I can definitely recommend both. The moss is a weird one as it doesn't really read as moss but more toxic goo. Anyways it's a great addition for any death guard painter out there. The gift of Papa Nurgle cannot be contained so all plague marines have some flashy bits poking through their armor. I paint all of this with Screamer Pink. I then layer on Buckman's Glow. Now the way I layer all the following highlights is with a stippling motion. I layer on Cadian Flesh. I keep my highlights a little bit watered down so they blend more with the previous step. With Kisla Flesh the flashy bits really begin to pop. Just keep stippling and add an additional layer if you're not happy with the coverage. I then add my final layer of Flayed One Flesh. I use this mainly on the pustules or thickest areas to add some additional highlight. Finally I shade all the flesh with Thonian Camo Shade. Or use any greenish shade that you might have. This will make the flesh look disgusting and diseased. This is a great base for all the disgusting tumors, guts and tentacles. I'll be adding some more effects later on, but first let's continue with all the details. All the horns and teeth are painted with Dark Reaper. Shaded with Ethonian Camo Shade. And I add two highlights. First I highlight with Verizian Grey. And the final highlight is Ulthan Grey. Focusing on the upper parts or sections that branch out. Adding these dark colored horns really adds some contrast to an otherwise monotone model. And it's fun to do something different than the endless bone looking horns I usually paint. Let's add some more diversity on the model. First I paint any wood and leather I find with wildwood. Wraps and nurgling teeth get a coat of skeleton horde. The myriad of tubes and inner suits get a coat of Black Templar. Nice and simple, I'm not even going to highlight this. The cloaks are shaded with Targor Rage Shade. If you have any streaking grime or rust on the cloak, just let it sit there, it will add to the textures. I shade the cloak again with a Druki Violet. This makes the cloaks purple in a subtle way. I really like to incorporate purple on my Plague Marines and this is a subtle way to do that. All the maggots on the model are painted with Ulthan Grey. 
and shade it with Athonian Camo Shade. The eye lenses are painted with Tesseract Glow. I also paint the outside of the lenses to make it look like lenses are projecting light. The eyes of the Plague Marines and Nurglings are also painted the same way, which gives them a very eerie look. I highlight the lenses and eyes with a mix of Dorn Yellow and White Scar. I'm adding the final bits of gore here. Fun! First I shade all the pustules with the Yenden Yellow to make them look extra gross and ready to pop. Next I stipple on Blood for the Blood God on a piece of foam. This is a great way to get some realistic looking blood splatter. Some sculpted ooze is painted with Nurgling Green so the next step will have a better coverage. I come in with Nurgle's Rot and just add it wherever I want to gross things up. It looks great in or on wounds or just oozing from the helmets of the Plague Marines. It's not really Plague Marine related, but let's have a quick Plasma Glow tutorial here. First I paint the Plasma Coils with White Scar. Then I cover the Plasma Coils with a mix of White Scar and Schlanesh Grey. Next I use a dry brush with very very little Jean Stealer Purple on it and carefully go over the coils. I do the same with Negaroth Knight. Finally I come in with Titanium White to redo some of the white between the coils and at the bottom. The reason I'm using Titanium White here is because it's very thin and fluid and it will go in the recesses very easy. Finally the base. I add Sterling Mud on all the bases. Next I spray Tesseract Glow with my airbrush. I tried to do it by brush but then it's very runny and it leaves ugly paint streaks. So I would recommend you do this with an airbrush. There should already be some overspray but I add some additional Tesseract Glow to the model itself to have some easy object source lighting. I then highlight the model and the flame with a mix of Tesseract Glow and Dorn Yellow. Finally I paint the rim of the base with Corvus Black. And here we have a kill team of the coolest Chaos Marine Legion, the Death Guard. I'm really happy how they turned out. They look disgusting but you can still make out all the details on them. A big step up from my previous way of painting the Sons of Mortarion. I can't wait to feel this kill team and spread the joy of Nurgle to all my opponents. For my next video I'll be looking at the last unit for my Gloom Spite Gits army and it's going to be a fun one, the Goapalooza. In the meantime be sure to check out my Instagram where I post pictures of current projects and behind the scenes stuff. But for now, thanks for watching.